हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर नवीन अग्रवाल आई एम एन इंटरवेंशियल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग एट वलसाड इन वापी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ गुजरात माय टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज डिस्कशन इज रिगार्डिंग पेरिकार्डियल इफ्यूजन व्हिच इज द डिजीज व्हिच इज कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय इंक्रीज फ्लूइड इन द पेरिकार्डियल स्पेस ऑफ द हार्ट नाउ व्हाट इज अ पेरिकार्डियल स्पेस पेरिकार्डियल स्पेस इज द आउटसाइड लेयर ऑफ द हार्ट और नॉर्मली द हार्ट इज कंटेन इन अ सैक और अ कैविटी व्हिच नॉर्मली हैज सम अमाउंट ऑफ फ्लूइड मे बी थर्टी टू फिफ्टी एम ऑफ फ्लूड विच एज अ लुब्रिकेंट फॉर द हार्ट बिकॉज हार्ट नॉर्मली के नॉट हैव फ्रिक्शन विद द सराउंडिंग स्ट्रक्चर्स हार्ट इज नॉर्मली कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग एंड इफ इट ऑल इट टचेज विद मल्टीपल स्ट्रक्चर्स इन साइड द चेस्ट कैविटी देन बिकॉज ऑफ फ्रिक्शन द हार्ट इज सो डेलीकेट दैट द हार्ट विल गेट डैमेज एंड द हार्ट गेट्स डैमेज द सर्फेस गेट्स डैमेज देन देर आर हाई चांसेज दैट द कर्नरी वेसल्स आर ऑल्सो passing on top of the heart surface and if it all anything happens to them very high chance that the patient will develop some compression some heart attack or some problems with that that is why god has made the heart safe by keeping it in a pericardial or a cap cavity or a sac or a bag which contains some amount of fluid and this inside this fluid containing cavity the heart continuously beats and this provides lubrication to the heart but in case of pericardial effusion what happens that this pericardial sac is uh, filled up with extra amount of fluid more and more fluid because of some disease some pathology comes inside the pericardial sac and once this extra fluid comes inside the pericardial sac the pericardial sac can stretch to some extent although slowly slowly if you can uh, keep filling some fluid then it gets time then it will st- stretch to some extent and it will not compress the heart but if at all you fill the pericardial sac with a large amount of fluid suddenly maybe in one or two days then the pericardium will not get any adequate time to stretch it out and it will cause compression on the heart because the space is this much only and the heart is inside that so the excess amount of fluid will start to compress the heart and heart will not get adequate space to uh, maintain its contraction and relaxation this will cause sudden compression of the heart and this compression of the heart is known as pericardial tamponade this is a extremely dangerous disease and the patient can suddenly collapse and die within seconds so this is a very dangerous disease and pericardial effusion is the disease which is characterized by excessive fluid inside the pericardial sac which is the normal sac which contains the heart and the heart uses a normally some amount of fluid to maintain lubrication but usually when the uh, the fluid becomes excessive then it can cause compression of the heart and the heart will uh stop functioning once the compression becomes so much that the heart is not given adequate amount of space to contract and relax normally the heart uh, pericardial space contains around 20 to 50 ml of uh, fluid but in a case of pericardial effusion the fluid may be around 200 ml 500 ml 1 liter depending on how rapidly the heart is getting filled with the fluid in an acute pericardial effusion as little as 200 to 300 ml of the fluid will cause compression of the heart and the patient can collapse and die in chronic pericardial effusion or slowly filling pericardial uh, fluid usually the patient will have some time and over a period of time slowly maybe 500 ml 800 ml of fluid will get accumulated inside the sac and that will cause compression on the heart once the fluid becomes excessive then the uh, fluid will cause compression of the heart and the patient might suddenly collapse the causes of this can be a lot usually any infection in the pericardial sac any cancer which is in the lungs in the heart in the breast or any surrounding tissue which can cause irritation of the pericardium cancer cells migrating into the pericardium any infection of the pericardium any inflammation which is causing increasing fluid secretion inside the pericardium or any uh, causes of bleeding inside the pericardial sac which is known as hemopericardium all these pathologies can lead to increased fluid some days like hypothyroidism some heart failures also can lead to excess amount of fluid congestion in the pericardial sac and this can cause compression once the heart starts to get compressed this is known as pericardial tamponade which is a dangerous disease which can sometimes kill the patient uh, the signs of pericardial effusion usually pericardial effusion usually uh, clinically it is very difficult to identify the patient comes to you the doctor with sense of breathlessness and uh, lethargy and the patient uh, on walking also some distance will have sense of palpitation sense of anxiety fear and uh, uh, not many symptoms are there usually but sometimes the conventional heart failure symptoms might be seen in the patient usually it is not painful and the patient will not develop any chest pain in that the conventional signs of heart failure that the patient will have breathlessness on walking palpitation the heart sounds will be muffled the cardiac sounds on the auscultation with the stethoscope will be compromised uh, the patient might be coming with signs of congestion or fluid filling in the legs uh, or fluid filling in the abdominal cavity which are conventional signs of chronic heart failure these are the signs with which the patient comes to the doctor usually the doctor can evaluate the patient by the form of ecg echo x-ray on ecg you will find that the pericardial fluid uh, causes the uh, voltage of the ecg complex to become smaller 
secondly it will cause swinging movement of the heart that which is known as electrical alternance in which the heart current will become larger smaller larger smaller that means because the heart is swinging inside the pericardial cavity some current complexes will be larger some current complexes will be smaller uh, besides this not many ecg changes are seen and no signs of uh, heart attack will be seen Although pericarditis or the inflammation or the, the pericardial sac will cause some ECG changes which might similarly look as compared to what is the ECG changes of a heart attack but there are some uh, important differences in that. We will not go into the details of that. Uh, echocardiography is the single most important tool which helps us to identify the pericardial fluid. This is so simply or so easily seen on an echocardiography that once you do an echocardiography majority of the times you will not be missing it and it will be very easy to identify. Uh, it is seen as a black current surroundings in outside the heart cavity and it has to be differentiated from the pleural effusion because in pleural effusion also you will be seeing some fluid just outside the heart and you have to differentiate whether it is a pleural fluid or the pericardial fluid. X-ray will also help you because the cardiac cells will become very enlarged but usually uh, the best single most modality to help in diagnosis of this patient is the echocardiography. If at all you have some difficulty in diagnosis then you can use a CT scan or an MRI. In majority of the cases it will tell you the cause of the effusion and if at all there is any coexistent malignancy or any cancer which is causing this fluid to accumulate inside the heart that will also be clearly visible on a CT scan. That is why in majority of these cases once you have a pericardial effusion a CT chest is usually also advised in these cases to find out what is the cause. Besides this you also do some blood investigation to see the protein levels of the body. You see the thyroid evaluation you evaluate for the kidney function of the patient because these are also causes where there can be fluid uh, collection inside the pericardial cavity. Kidney failure, hypothyroidism, liver failure, uh, heart failure all these things can lead to accumulation of fluid inside the pericardial space. Uh, now I will be discussing what is the management of this. Usually it is a dangerous thing and has to be early recognized and the patient has to be admitted in the hospital because it can lead to sudden cardiac death. The patient can immediately collapse. At this point of time because the patient uh, is BP is low uh, and the patient is having symptoms of heart failure you have to give the patient more fluids and you have to give the patient uh, some inotropes sometimes to improve the pump function of the heart. Uh, usually the pump function is not deteriorating in these patients but the fluid is not allowing the heart to contract that is the reason for the low BP. Uh, sometimes when the patient comes to you with sense of breathlessness people by mistake give the patient diuretics or urine increasing medicines which are given in all other forms of heart failure. People think that the patient is breathless because of heart failure and they give the diuretics but diuretics in this condition can be detrimental and the patient can suddenly die because diuretics can cause sudden drop in the blood pressure and the patient can immediately collapse. So urine increasing medication should not be given in case of a pericardial effusion related breathlessness. The most important treatment modality is a pericardiosynthesis. In a pericardiosynthesis the patient is admitted in the hospital and is an, uh, under fluoroscopic guidance or ultrasound guidance a needle is inserted into the pericardial cavity. This is an extremely dangerous procedure because this is usually done very crudely with fluoroscopy guidance and ultrasound guidance and even slight amount of 2-3 millimeters also you go inside you might puncture the cardiac cavity and the needle will go inside the heart cavity which can be extremely dangerous and sometimes fatal also. So very carefully this is done although still it is very dangerous and you put a, a needle inside the pericardial space you insert some contrast and on fluoroscopy you see whether the contrast in the, is in the correct space you confirm the position of the needle and then instead of the needle you pass a wire through the needle and then you remove the needle and put a sheath. Once you put a sheath uh, inside that space then you remove the wire and from that sheath you can connect, connect a cannula or an aspiration catheter and you can aspirate among the, the fluid. You can uh, take out some fluid and send for diagnostic analysis also to assess what is the cause of the fluid whether the patient is having any heart failure or any infection or any uh, cancer which is present inside the fluid cell that you can evaluate it, get evaluated by the fluid uh, assessment. And uh, once extra amount of fluid is removed from the pericardial sac the BP of the patient immediately picks up and the patient becomes uh, normalized and hemodynamic stabilized. Sometimes the sheath is kept in position for at least one to two days to see whether the fluid is not recumulating and if at all the fluid is not recumulating then you remove the sheath and uh, seal that area. It does not involve any surgery or it does not involve any suturing of that area. It is a percutaneous procedure and completely uh, minimally invasive but slightly risky and has to be done very carefully. Sometimes what happens that the fluid is located only on one side of the heart that means it is either posteriorly or anteriorly. 
usually this sort of fluid is very difficult to remove by a pericardiocentesis because needle you cannot keep poking at multiple points in the heart you can only put the needle at one point from the apex and only if the fluid is present in that area only then can you aspirate the fluid from the heart otherwise you cannot keep poking your needles at multiple points of the heart that is why pericardiocentesis is slightly tricky and difficult procedure and has to be done with utmost care inside a hospital or a center with a cardiac facility unless you do not have a center with a cath lab facility uh, usually in cancer patients when the fluid is accumulating multiple times and every few days you are having more and more, and more pericardial effusion then you can insert some talc powder or doxycycline into the pericardial space which will cause the pericardial layers to stick and get sclerosed or adhered and over a period of time this will not allow more and more fluid to accumulate but this is usually done only in very selected cases because uh, long term results of this are not very good only in cancer patients where the patient survival is not good and the patient is expected to die within the next few months uh, because pericardial fluid collecting in a cancer patient is indication of a very bad stage cancer at least the patient is in stage 3 or stage 4 of the cancer and usually majority of the patients will not survive more than six months in these cases so in these cases just as a palliative care you can do this or you can create a pericardial window also you can surgically create a cavity uh, or put a sheath and continuously keep on aspirating or you keep, uh, create a cannula from where you continuously keep on aspirating the pericardial fluid if at all once you remove the fluid and the fluid keeps on accumulating these things can be done in cancer patient to uh, improve the survival chances of the patient although long term survival will not be improved but the patient will have a less better survival and the chances of the patient dying immediately will be improved. Uh, in case of trauma patients, sometimes the patient uh, with at any case of chest trauma, this should be evaluated in all these patients because any patient who is having a blunt chest trauma can have a sudden pericardial effusion and suddenly die because in a blunt chest trauma, sometimes what happens that uh, some capillary or some vessel in the pericardial sac will get suddenly ruptured and blood will start getting accumulated inside the pericardial sac and this blood will compress the heart and the patient might die. In cases of cardiac rupture because of heart attack also this is the common reason uh, that blood gets collected in the pericardial sac and the patient develops tamponade and the patient dies. In patient uh, after angioplasty also if there is any vessel perforation this is also the most important reason why the patients die because blood starts coming out from the coronary vessels and it gets accumulated in the pericardial sac and it compresses the heart and the patient dies. So these are the scenarios where uh, trauma or any surgery or any uh, any incident in the life of the patient can cause sudden accumulation of the blood heart rupture because of heart attack or any uh, angioplasty related complication can also result in blood collection post cardiac surgery also this might be sometimes seen that the patient will have fluid collection inside the pericardial sac and the patient might go into a tamponade and suddenly die so uh, at least echocardiography should be done in majority of these cases and that will help you clinch the diagnosis and if at all fluid is accumulated in that cases then you can aspirate the fluid by needle aspiration technique. In all cases of blunt chest trauma, it is important that you do an echocardiography of this patient because sometimes the patient will look completely stable from above and you will feel that the patient is stable, nothing is happening to the patient and within few minutes the patient will collapse and suddenly die. That is why echocardiography should be done in all cases of blunt trauma. Uh, if at all you find a pericardial effusion that can be managed with the emergency because uh, any case of blood collecting inside the pericardial effusion the, it is very dangerous for the patient and the patient can suddenly collapse. Some cases of cardiac rupture also or stab injury to the chest might also uh, you might find that blood is collected inside the pericardial effusion uh, cavity and the patient will collapse. So in these cases also the surgeon has to open the chest and seal the heart and seal the pericardial space also to prevent the patient from dying from tamponade. Uh, we have discussed that in post heart attack patient also sometimes the heart cavity suddenly ruptures and blood gets collected in the pericardial sac and within few seconds also patient will die sometimes the patient while talking also and while doing some work suddenly will collapse and die you will not even get any time because within seconds the blood is crushed inside the pericardial sac and you cannot do anything for these patients uh, if at all the patient is in the hospital and there is slow leakage of the blood the patient can be rushed immediately for the surgery and if at all the BP is stable the surgeon can open up and stitch the area and put a pericardial patch and uh, the bleeding from the heart can be stopped in these cases but majority of the patients the bleeding is so rapid that the patient cannot be saved and it is a, almost a death sentence for the patient this is one of the very important causes why patients of sudden uh, recent heart attack die suddenly at home uh, most important cause although is arrhythmias that sudden rhythm disturbance occur and the patient dies but this is also a very important cause that suddenly the heart will burst and they will be bleeding inside the pericardial space and the patient will die majority of these patients are not treatable and majority of the patients will die within few seconds or few minutes of this event occurring 
So pericardial effusion is a very important disease. The treatment in majority of the cases is pericardial aspiration of the fluid. If at all, depending on the pathology and depending on the fluid reports, you can manage the patient with some steroids or some other drugs which can prevent the fluid from reaccumulating. Patients having some infection or patients having some uh, inflammation related pericardial effusion, usually we do not uh, go straight away for pericardiosynthesis. We give the patient some trial of medicine and steroids. Majority of the times it responds to this and you might not require to aspirate the fluid. But in case of chronic inflammation, especially in tuberculosis patients, the patient recurrently develops pericardial effusion and the patient might require pericardial synthesis. You send the fluid for evaluation and depending on the fluid reports, you plan the treatment strategy for the patient. In this topic, we have discussed about what is pericardial effusion and pericardiosynthesis. If at all you have any comments, queries regarding to this topic, feel free to discuss about them. If at all you have any patient related queries also, you can feel free to discuss about them in the comment section below. In the end, I am Dr. Naveen Agrawal and I thank you for a very patient listening and I would uh, really appreciate that all the new viewers to my channel give us a give thumbs up, big thumbs up and like our channel and subscribe to our channel and this would give us a lot of inspiration and motivation to continue the channel in future. Thank you.